Today's motion uh, is an important step forward in the search for truth and justice for the Bella Murphy families. Bella Murphy is a large housing estate at the foot of the Black Mountain in West Belfast. Like other housing estates throughout these islands, it was badly built in the 1950s. Jerry built houses in an area which lacked many of the basic facilities for education, recreation, jobs or for young people. My mother was allocated a home there in the late 1950s. So the people who are gathered in the public gallery today are my neighbours or the children or the grandchildren of my neighbours and friends. They are the relatives of the 11 citizens killed in Bella Murphy in August 1971. August the Falshamore Road. I also want to welcome the British Ambassador Dominic Chilcott here today. I trust he will convey the feeding of this Oireachtas to his government and ask why decades into a peace process the government in London does not accept the right of these victims of British state terrorism to be told and to acknowledge and to have their truth acknowledged. I also want to welcome the relatives of some of the victims of the McGurk pub bombings who have accompanied the Bella Murphy relatives today. Tagilti Nadini Shaw Eglorog and Arinya. They are victims of a war which commenced in the northeast part of this island in the late 1960s. War was the British state's response to the civil rights struggle. The Irish government of the day stood idly by as ordinary people found themselves caught up in a carnival of reaction against very modest demands for civil rights. On the 9th of August 1971, internment was introduced. By that time, British troops had been on the streets for two years. They reinforced their will through curfew, rubber bullets, gas, water cannon and lead bullets. On the back of the initial internment swoops, the parachute regiment was deployed in Ballamurphy. They, like the Royal Marine Commandos, were the shock troops of the British military, deployed against communities which were deemed to be particularly rebellious. When I was growing up in Ballamurphy, it wasn't particularly rebellious at all. But the events of 1969, 1970 and 1971 politicised and republicanised an entire community. But Bella Murphy never went to war. The war came to us. The bombing at McGurk's pub in North Belfast was another horrific example of that war. It took place in December 1971, four months after the events in Bella Murphy. In both instances, as in many others involving British state forces, the establishment sought to cover up and to deny any responsibility for the deaths. The McGurk families have initiated legal proceedings against the PSNI, the British Ministry of Defence and the NIO. An investigation by the police ombudsman found the RUC had exhibited an investigative bias by blaming the loyalist attack on Republicans. And new evidence uncovered by researchers for the families at the British National Archives in London reveal links between the McGurk's Bar bombing and other similar instances, including the Kelly's Bar attack on the 13th of May 1972 in Bella Murphy. And these links provide evidence of collusion between the British state agencies and Unionist death squads. We've seen this also in the recent RTE and BBC television programmes that looked at collusion and which reinforce the view that the issue of collusion, and we have put this case to you, Taoiseach, demands a standalone debate in this stall, and I would once again ask that this be scheduled in the autumn. For the Bella Murphy families with us today, their story begins in the early hours of Monday, August 9, 1971. Thousands of British soldiers, supported by the RUC, smashed their way into hundreds of nationalist homes. 
I was in Ballymurphy that night. I watched my own home being smashed into. I watched other male members of my family being dragged off. I watched my mother and my younger brothers and sisters fleeing. The house was occupied for days by the parachute regiment. They destroyed everything. They shit on beds. They urinated on wardrobes. They broke up family and religious memorabilia. They dragged away over 300 men and boys into the night, many of them later to be tortured. And in the following hours in the morph, they shot dead 10 citizens, nine men, including a local priest, and the mother of eight children. And contrary to what the Tanishta implies, there was, no, there was gunfire only from one side when these citizens were killed. And that gunfire came from the Parachute Regiment. The innocent victims were Father Q. Mullen, Francis Quinn, Daniel Taggart, Joan Connolly, a mother of eight, Joseph Murphy, Noel Phillips, Edward Doherty, John Laberty, Joseph Carr, and John McCarr. An 11th man, local community worker, Paddy McCarthy, died from a heart attack after a British Army patrol subjected him to a mock execution. 11 families lost loved ones and 57 children were bereaved. As a consequence of internment, many Belfast citizens fled their homes seeking safety in refugee camps in this state. Among them were some of the Bella Murphy families and their children. Some of those in the gallery today watched the funerals of their parents on news footage broadcast by RTE. Others were too young to comprehend the enormity of what happened. Five months later, the same paras were on the streets of Derry and shot dead 14 people. And the main difference between what happened on Bloody Sunday in Derry and what happened in Bella Murphy was that a part of the assault in Derry was televised. It became immediately a huge issue of controversy. While in Ballamurphy, only the people there knew what had happened. But of course, the British knew, the regiments knew, the commanders knew, the British Ministry of Defence knew. And then six months after Bloody Sunday, the Paris returned to West Belfast and carried out another attack in Spring Hill, the housing estate adjacent to Ballamurphy, where they shot dead another five people, including three children and another Catholic priest. Two Catholic priests killed in the one community. Margaret Gargan was aged 13, John Dougal was 16, Davy McCafferty was 15, Patrick Bolt Butler was aged 40, and the second Catholic priest, Father Noel Fitzpatrick, was aged 40. For 44 years, the Balmurphy families, like many others, have demonstrated extraordinary courage and determination in the face of British secrecy and obstruction. La fada and la ni wur scale by your morahu clues ishtiakta. It was the forgotten massacre. Agdagje brown a vi ko fear agus ko trua lehen slad ella. For four decades, the families have campaigned with great dignity and with grace. I have accompanied them to meet successive British secretaries of state and shadow secretaries of state. Truth to tell, I have lost count of the number we met. But none of them did anything of any consequence, though some of them were moved to tears by what they were told. We have also briefed successive Tishik and ministers for foreign affairs, and today they briefed the Oireachtas. So are we also going to let them down? It's obvious that the memories from that cruel period in our history are still fresh, that the pain and grief is as strong as it was over 40 years ago. But they've also refused to be broken. They've refused to hate. They, they go forward with positivity. They have compiled significant evidence which shows that all who died were killed unlawfully and in breach of Article 2 of the European Convention on Human Rights. The case also raises serious questions regarding human rights abuses committed by the British Army and exposes a culture of impunity in which members of the British forces routinely acted outside the law and were protected while so doing. 
In November 2010, the families made an application to the Attorney General to reopen the inquest. A year later, he agreed. And this was a welcome development, but the families and I remain concerned about the limitations of the inquest system. And consequently, they have proposed the appointment of an independent panel to examine all documents relating to the context, circumstances and aftermath of the deaths of their loved ones. The British Secretary of State has rejected this proposal, and she's won in a long line. For that reason, the families are looking to the Irish Government and to our Octus members to demand that the British Government stop blocking, stop hiding, and agree to an independent review. This all-party motion is an important step on the road to achieving this. But let no one think that voting for this is enough. It's not enough to say that we support these families, or indeed other victims. As this dial knows only too well from its experience, the success of British governments in respect of the Dublin and Monaghan bombings, for example, motions on their own will not make a difference. So the Irish government needs to put in place, and it hasn't put it in place yet, needs to put in place a strategic approach which sees the British government challenged on this issue at every meeting and at every international forum. Unless we do this, the British Government will continue to refuse to give the people of Ballymurphy, and particularly the families and other families, what they deserve. If our Government doesn't do it, how on earth can we expect anyone else to? But we are not making this the main issue of this time on the back of this all-party Oireachtas motion. We can't expect anyone else to do it. This matter must be on every agenda between Irish and British officials, and the full resources of the state must be employed to challenge the actions. Let me say this, it would be good for the people of Britain for the lid to be lifted on this phase of their history, of our joint history. The full resources of the state must be employed, because it's not enough to raise the issue, to tick the box, to talk quietly on the side. It's only when you have built up using our diplomatic and other influences that you will get the British Government to respond as they did on Bloody Sunday. And of course Mr Cameron deserves commendation for his apology at that time. But remember it too took decades to get. So we should not forget the pain, the suffering, the tragedies from decades of conflict, because they are, for many, as real today as they were when they first occurred. Almost 4,000 people died, and countless others were injured in a war that was vicious and brutal. For Turimus Kahramila Dina Bas Lalin Koguabi Gair Ufasak, over the years I have met many victims, including victims of the IRA. I am prepared to do that, as are other leaders of Sinn Féin, in the time ahead because the grief of all victims of the conflict must be respected and acknowledged, and all of us in political leadership have a responsibility to do all that we can to ensure that no future generation suffers the pain of war. We who have survived have a duty to set them free. The past, for many, however, remains a reality of the present, even though it was over 40 years ago. It's as if it was yesterday. I even found myself getting emotional when I opened up my remarks here today, even though it's almost half a century ago. So the past is the present for so many people, and it remains an obstacle to dealing with the future or a pretext or an excuse for refusing to build a new future of equality, fairness and prosperity for everyone. For that reason, Sinn Féin endorsed the measures in the Stormont House Agreement for addressing legacy issues. And notwithstanding the difficulties which exist, there is an onus on the Irish and British governments to implement those elements of the Stormont House Agreement that deal with the past and legacy issues. Taoiseach, there is no need to wait for local parties. None at all. Issues of security and responsibilities for the forces involved are the responsibility of the two governments. They are not Sinn Féin, they are not the DUPs, they are not the UUPs, or the SDLPs or the Alliance Party. The governments can put together that process for dealing with the past, and Sinn Féin will cooperate with it. The peace process needs continuous nourishment. It needs to be at the top of the government's agenda. And notwithstanding 
any of the other political priorities. That's where we need to put it. Thank you very Fortunately, much. Fortunately, it's not there at this time, although this Oireachtas all-party motion is very welcome and a good step in the right direction, and I commend this motion to the Dáil.